Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. This is Dr. Usman Alauddin, and I will be teaching uh, in this semester the course of internal combustion engines. The course title is ME215. So, I will start the lecture with a short introduction of mine. As I already told my name, my name is Dr. Usman Alauddin, and I'm currently I'm serving as an assistant professor in mechanical department. I am also the director of NED Dice Energy Innovation Center. Uh, most of you, you already know me because I have uh, taught the course of thermodynamics in the in the last semester. So, in in today's lecture, uh, these are the learning outcomes of today's lecture. So, uh, I will start the lecture with with course uh, CLOs and other details of the course like the what, what are the uh, reference book textbook and what is the sessional marks distribution then in the in the second phase i will discuss what uh, what is engine and heat engine the comparison of internal and external combustion engines pros and cons of internal combustion engines engine classification and at the last i will be discussing basic engine components and and, and their nomenclature. So these are the learning outcomes of today's lecture. So we will, I, I, I expect that at the end of today's lecture, you will have a thorough understand, understanding of these, these points. So uh, these are the course learning outcomes. Uh, these are, and, and, and the course of internal combustion engine has uh, four, four course learning outcomes. Uh, the statements of CLO1, CLO2, CLO3 and CLO4 are, are written and mentioned in this table. Uh, CLO1, CLO2 and CLO3 are related to uh, theory of the course while the CLO4 grabs the working and performance of different types of basic and modern IC engines and their major components. It is, it is related to the practicals. So in the theory section we will be covering these uh, first three learning outcomes and you guys are are pretty much uh, familiar with the obe systems uh, obe system and what are the course learning outcome what are plos and you and you already know that you you have to pass each clo and you will be given like uh, two or three attempts in the form of quizzes assignment or in the final paper or in the midterm at least you will be given uh, two attempts to pass each CLO. So I am not going to spend too much time on these uh, CLO statements. You can have a look into them, and if you have any question, we can discuss in the live session. So uh, I have in this slide I have mentioned that uh, which chapters of the of the textbook uh, will be covered in CLO one. So chapter number one. 3, 8, 9, 13, 14, 16, and 17 uh, will be covered in CLO1. And, and you can see at the at the bottom of the slide that only theory of all these chapters. So CLO1 uh, uh, deals with the theory. Like, in, like if you have a question from CLO1, then it will have only theory, like the definition, explanation, discuss, describe, so such questions will be asked from the topics of these chapters. Then this is CLO2 and, and you can note that CLO2 starts with solve numerical problems related to the design and operation of uh, internal combustion engines. So uh, few chapters are same but now as you can read as you can see that only numerical and derivations of all these chapters will be covered in this CLO2 that is in CLO2 uh, you will be given like some numericals or some derivation to solve then this is CLO3 and CLO3 has chapter number 12 15 6 and 7 and both theory and numerical can be asked in this CLO and CLO4 as I already told you it is related to the practical okay so now we have uh, the text and reference books so internal combustion engines by V. Gannison. Uh, this is the textbook for this course. Uh, in the Google Classroom of the course, I have attached the PDF file of the, of the textbook. 
and there are some other uh, reference books like the internal combustion engine by R K Rajput. This is a very, this is also a very good book. Introduction to internal combustion engines by R Stone. This is, uh, this book is uh, relatively uh, bit difficult to understand because its language is little bit difficult to understand as compared to R Rajput and Ganesan. But um, uh, this is the reference book. You can also you can also consult this book. Now, the marks distribution and grading. Uh, I have written here that the total sessional marks will be 50 as compared to the uh, previous uh, session. This is not yet confirmed. It is to be decided. That is why I have written tentatively that uh, there will be like 50 sessional marks. And what will be the distribution? It will be decided uh, later on. Okay, so let's start the course of internal combustion engine. Uh, the word engine comes in the course title, internal combustion engine. So what is an engine? Engine is a device which transforms one form of energy into another form of energy. So you uh, know this basic definition. And when we talk about transforming one form of energy into another form of energy, then the very important uh, concept comes in, comes into the play which is the efficiency that we always talks about the efficiency that how much is the efficiency from of conversion of one form of energy into another form of energy then normally most of the engines convert thermal energy into mechanical work and therefore they are called heat engines and if you remember in chapter number six of thermodynamics we learned in very detail in too much detail uh, about the heat engines so heat engine is a device uh, whose input is heat and the output is uh, mechanical work. So it takes some heat from the source. It converts part of this heat, part of this heat into useful work output, and it rejects the remaining amount of heat into the uh, to the cold sink. So QH minus QC will be the net work done. So internal combustion engine. Uh, we are talking about uh, a device which transforms one form of energy into another form of energy. Now let's talk about comparison between internal and external combustion engines. So what is an external combustion engine and what is an internal combustion engine? So as the name as the name suggests that in external combustion engine combustion will be taking place uh, outside the system. There will be a there will be a device. There will be a proper device. There will be a proper place outside the system where the combustion will be taking place whereas in internal combustion engine there will be no dedicated device there will be no dedicated space but there will be a small portion inside the system where the combustion will be taking place so that is why they are called internal combustion engine so in internal combustion engine combustion will be taking place uh, within the engine whereas in external combustion engine combustion will be taking place outside the system. Let's talk about the steam power plant which we discussed in thermodynamics. So what is a steam power plant? Steam power plant is a plant is a, is, a, is a plant which uses water as a working fluid and it produces the uh, work output useful for output in the form of let's suppose electricity. So let's talk about the key electric power plant or hub power plant they are using the steam power plant. So when you let's suppose when you have a chance to visit this uh, this K, uh, these plants like K electric uh, or, or a hub power plant, you will see that the steam power plants are are pretty large setup. So, like probably you need a, a whole day, one whole day to visit the whole power plant. So, like boiler where the combustion is taking place is like ten story building. So you have to go, uh, like you have to you have to go from a lift to from bottom to top uh, it's so huge so uh, the boiler the combustion will be taking place in boiler and it will produce the hot steam and then it it passes through uh, like a piping system and it passes through some heat exchanger heat exchange devices then it will go into the it will go it will go into the turbine and it, it, will, it will produce the power output so this is like this is an example of an external combustion engine where like combustion is taking place somewhere else now let's talk about the internal combustion engine 
this is the let's suppose this is example of a bike engine like it is not like this that you have a you have a combustion chamber where it's like uh, 2 meter away from the engine or 5 meter away from the engine it's not like this there is a there is an engine and within the engine the combustion will be taken like you will supply the air fuel mixture and then with the help of a spark plug you initiate the combustion and the combustion will take place the exhaust gases are formed and these exhaust gases will push the piston uh, downward and then and, and the crankshaft rotates and the and the vehicle rotates so this is an example of a of a of an internal combustion engine so now at this point at this point i would like to uh, discuss the importance of your course that that is the course of internal combustion engine me215 because if you if you realize that that the course is important the course is important to study then uh, the interest of the students automatically develop when the students know that the course is important is important the course is very applied uh, that they will be dealing with the with the uh, engine and they will be like seeing different components of an engine because these engines they you you, you use in your daily life you that like, most of you are using the uh, motorbike car etc so if you learn a uh, few new things in this course then you will be applying these uh, this knowledge directly to your uh, to your daily life so this is very important so this when you know that the course is applied the course is of applied nature then the then the student interest is automatically developed so now to uh, to uh, make you understand the importance of your course let's uh, discuss some applications of internal combustion engine because it's a human human psycho psychology that if you if you somehow convince somebody that the that there are many important applications of a thing then you can you can make him or her realize that that this thing is important so now if i ask from you that uh, what are the what are the applications of internal combustion engine if you see your daily lives then if uh, from your daily lives can you can you identify a few examples where the internal combustion engines are used then straight away the answer should come that the internal combustion engines are used in the automobile sector and if i talk about the automobiles uh what are the numbers the numbers are not in 100 not in 1000 there are million billions of uh, automobiles which are running on the roads like motorbikes cars trucks heavy trucks uh, some so these num these automobiles are in in a large number and so much that like you know that in like in when nd was started we only have a mechanical department and then in later on we develop a separate department which is called uh, automotive engineering in automotive automotive engineering they specifically uh, study the internal combustion engine this is the importance of your of the of your course then apart from the transportation sector like people are using the transportation like the automobiles for for like the, the private use the, the people have their own vehicles then we have the public transport system then we have the luggage transport system like uh, we transport the uh vegetables fruits luggage all these thing from one place to another place we all need the uh, automobiles the vehicles then we if we talk about the power generation then in power generation the internal combustion engines are also used like for example like in in pakistan we have a load shedding problem so everyone most of the people have a generator small generator at their home so like 1 kva 2 kva 10 kva 100 kva so we have small to uh Uh, large uh, generators running in our uh, in our houses and 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 secondly in in, in in industry they are also using the uh, internal combustion engine generators for the power production like uh, like i remember last week i met with a guy with uh, from thal engineering they they told me that they are not they are not taking the electricity from klp because it's very expensive so they have their own uh, uh, internal combustion engine based Uh, a generator so they in the in the office timing like they they switch off the electricity from the k electric and they and they turn on their 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 private generators so they use the like the diesel and some other fuel and and, and the electricity they produce from the electric from the from the generators is relatively uh, uh cheap so like internal combustion engines 
have application in automotive automotive sector and, and the power production and, and 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 you know that in power production is a, is a is a big application and then we talk about the uh, locomotive like in trains uh, they are using the internal combustion engines in in aeroplane they are also using the internal combustion engine in small to big big ships like in on, uh, in marine they are using the internal combustion engine so uh, the the thing which i want to realize you that the the course of internal combustion is a very very important course uh, not only that if you if you develop a uh, strong concepts in in this course it will give you uh, good marks in this course uh, secondly if you have good concepts in, in internal combustion engine it will help you a lot in your personal development as a as an engineer so you can apply most of the things which you which you are going to learn in in this course uh, in your daily lives okay so now let's move forward that let's discuss some pros and cons of internal combustion engine so uh, first thing is the absence of heat exchangers in the passage of the working fluid results in a considerable mechanical simplicity and improved thermal efficiency now let's let like i told you in an external combustion engine we have a dedicated uh, device or dedicated space where the combustion will take place and then from that device the the hot working fluid will be transported with the help of a, a piping system and in between you have will have different heat exchangers so when you are when you are doing the combustion in in the inside the engine you will eliminate all these devices like there, there is no need of a special boiler there is no need of the piping system there is no need of the heat exchange devices so it will it will make the system sim simplify so like the system will become uh, simple the system will become less in weight the system will become uh, less in weight then the system will become uh, uh, less costly as well and when you have when you have less uh, components the heat losses will be reduced and and ultimately efficiency will be increased so this is a very uh, big advantage of using internal combustion engine is that that they are simple in size because as i i already told you that if you talk about the steam power plant you probably you need a uh, one day to visit the whole power plant so there are so much uh, 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 different devices and like the piping system and so, and all these things so all these things will be eliminated in the in the internal combustion engine the second point is that low weight to power ratio as compared to the steam power plant so when you compare the internal combustion engine with the steam power plant as i already told you that they have less weight that they have less weight and more power so the weight to power ratio will be will be lower as compared to the steam power plant and possible to develop reciprocating internal combustion engine of very small power of very small power like for example you have a very, uh, have a 1 kva or 2 kva generator running at in your houses and we have like a 70 cc bike or or or, or lawn mower like a machine used to cut the grass in the in the lawns so like uh, in internal combustion engine provide the luxury of uh, uh, making uh small gen small uh, devices which for which can produce this very small power output but let's suppose if you need a 1 kilowatt and for 1 kilowatt you cannot go to install a steam power plant because a steam power plant is requires a heavy investment and and a huge space and 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 too much investment but for internal combustion engine they are small in size so you can go uh, you can you can go for the very small power outputs outputs power output or even a fraction of kilowatt with reasonable efficiency and cost this, this thing we have already discussed higher thermal efficiencies can be obtained with moderate maximum working pressure of the fluid in this cycle since the system is small so we can develop high pressures in the in the in the engines and and higher pressure mean higher efficiency the maximum temperature of the working fluid in the cycle persists only for a very small fraction of the of the cycle time therefore very high working fluid temperatures can be employed resulting in higher thermal efficiency it means that you know that uh, we already discussed the internal combustion engine in the course of thermodynamics we in the there is a compression stroke we compress the air fuel mixture and then we give a spark with the help of a spark plug uh, the combustion starts the exhaust gases are formed then these exhaust gases will push the piston downward so this will apply a force on the on the on the crankshaft and the crankshaft rotates and then we have a 
and the rotation of the shaft. Now this combustion takes place within a jiffy, like very small fraction of time. So it means since the maximum temperatures are occurring for a very small time, so we can have a very high temperature. So this this will have uh, a moderate uh, average temperatures of the engine because the high temperatures are are occurring for a very small period of time. So this allows the uh, this allows to achieve the high temperatures and high temperatures mean uh, high efficiency because if you remember in the Carnot engine the Carnot efficiency depends on only two things the high temperature and the minimum temperature. If the, uh, the higher the maximum temperature the higher will be the efficiency. Now now let's discuss some uh, disadvantages of internal combustion engine. The, the most important uh, uh, disadvantage of the internal combustion is that they have the vibration problem because in internal combustion engine we have a very we have a large number of moving parts like a piston is uh, moving back and forth uh, doing the reciprocating motion we have the gears we have the crankshaft we have the we have too many moving parts and when and, and then we have so much this much number of uh, moving parts we we have experienced the problem of vibration this is the sound this is sound pollution whenever you have let's you let's recall the bike or a car or a truck engine whenever the, it's running uh, the engine is vibrating secondly in internal combustion engine we can we do not have the luxury of using a variety of fuels only limited number of liquid or gaseous fuels can be used and and these fuels are are expensive like petrol or, or or CNG they can be used but in in the steam power plant you when you talk about the, the crude oil or the heavy furnace oil they, they they can be directly used so these fuels are dirty these fuels are relatively inexpensive but these dirty fuels cannot be used in the in the internal combustion engine otherwise you will have the problem of like uh, carbon uh, gathering at the at the at the piston uh, and the cylinder walls and ultimately the engine will become choke so you cannot use the dirty fuel in the in the in the internal combustion engine. So this is a, this is another advantage. Then we have and then we all then we need to use the cooling system. Like in in car we have a radiator. So because engine is hot, so we need to cool it down. Otherwise the uh, the critical parts of the engine will be will be expanded and they will be and the engine will be sealed. Then we have the because and then and the last point is that we have the fixed we have the moving parts so they are rubbing parts so the, like the piston is moving inside the uh, in the side the cylinder so we'll have the frictional power frictional losses so because of the friction some useful heat will be lost and 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 this is this is another disadvantage of the internal combustion okay so now let's discuss some uh, engine classification so heat engines can be classified as we already discussed that into two categories number one is internal combustion engines and the second category is the external combustion engines so whether it is an internal combustion engine or external combustion engine there are two types like the rotary and the reciprocating and uh, in the reciprocating mean we have the we will have a piston cylinder device and in the piston will move back and forth it will do the reciprocating motion that is why they are called reciprocating engines and the other engines will be a uh, rotary motion that, that the that the moving parts will have a uh, will have a uh, rotary motion in the rotary motion in the rotary type uh, internal combustion engine we have open cycle gas turbines uh, and and wankel engine and in the reciprocating type internal combustion engine we have gasoline engine or diesel engine right? these are the like two common engines the, the gasoline engine is the is the spark ignition engine which is commonly used in the bikes or uh, in small cars and then we have the diesel engine like uh, which is normally used in the in the cars or trucks etc and so and on the other side reciprocating type external combustion engines we have steam engine which was used in the past now they have become obsolete uh, and then the sterling engines and, and and rotary type external combustion engine we have steam turbine and glow cycle uh, glow cycle gas turbine which is used for the power production and on the left side the open cycle gas turbine means they are used in the aeroplanes so this is another way of classification of engines on the basis of cycle of operation so we on the basis of cycle of operation we can uh, we can categorize the internal combustion engines into two categories number one is the constant volume heat addition cycle 
or auto cycle it is also called spark ignition engine si engine or gasoline engine and then second one is the constant pressure heat addition cycle or diesel engine cycle it is also called compression ignition engine ci engine or diesel engine so this thing these engines we have already learned in the in the course of thermodynamics so if you recall if you recall so in this in the in the spark ignition engine we have a constant volume constant volume heat addition while in while in diesel engine we have a constant pressure heat addition so this is one way of classifying the engine so uh, spark ignition engine or compression ignition engine another way of uh, classifying the engines on the basis of types of fuel used so on the, on the on the basis of type of fuel used uh, we can classify as engines based on type of fuel engines using volatile liquid fuels like gasoline alcohol kerosene benzene etc volatile liquid fuels are the fuel which like they evaporate very quickly like the petrol if you if you leave the petrol in in an open container uh, after few after after few hours uh, all the petrol all the gasoline will be gone because it will evaporate and it will evaporate and go into the atmosphere so the engines which use the volatile liquid fuels like uh, like bikes motor bikes aeroplanes they use the gasoline or the petrol and kerosene and and then the engines like the second engines are engines using gaseous fuels like natural gas liquefied petroleum gas blast furnace gas biogas etc so like uh, you know that uh, we have few cars which are running on the natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas so liquefied petroleum gas is relatively expensive so it is not commonly used in the in the vehicles but natural gas we have uh, we have in abundant so we we are commonly using natural gas for for the engines then the third types of engine engine using solid fuels like charcoal and powdered coal etc like uh, these things uh, were used in the past in the in the in the world uh, like china uh, used the uh, charcoal or powdered coal based internal combustion engines but now they are becoming uh, because people are ban banning these devices because of the of the pollution problem but they can be used then the fourth one is the engine using viscous fuels like heavy and light diesel oils like the, you know the trucks the heavy truck they are using the or the buses or they are using a viscous uh, fuel and the last one is the engine using two fuels the hybrid fuel like you know most of the cars have option of running on the petrol or and or, or a cng when you have the cng it will be running on cng when the cng is finished you can shift it to the to the to the other fuel like petrol so this is one this is one of the ways to classify engines that is on the basis of type of fuel used third way of classification is according to the method of charging the engines so uh, charging the engine means is not like that you you attach a, a charger or a plug and then the engine will be charged charging in in charging the engine mean in internal combustion mean is is the supply of air fuel mixture if you supply the air fuel mixture to an engine it means you are charging the engine so there are two ways uh, you can supply the air fuel mixture or air at a normal atmospheric pressure then this is these are the naturally aspirated engines and the second one is the supercharged engines in in the supercharged engines you supply the air fuel mixture uh, above the atmospheric pressure so you slightly increase the pressure it will improve the combustion efficiency which we will which we will we will be discussing uh, in detail in the in the upcoming chapters uh, but the supercharged engine and the natural aspirated engine has a has a one major difference that in supercharged engines air fuel mixture is supplied at a at a high pressures so the engine can also be classified on the basis of type of ignition so we have like battery ignition system battery ignition uh, engine or magneto ignition engine like in like in in cars and trucks we use the battery for the ignition system like if we have a spark ignition engine you know that in, in in spark ignition engine we need a spark to initiate the combustion 
and that spark comes uh, from a spark plug and like spark plug is a device to which you supply a high voltage current and the high voltage current produces a spark and it produces the combustion and, and that high voltage current comes from uh, let's suppose either from a battery uh, or, or a magneto in in cars you have a battery or in and in motorbikes you have a, sm a small coil which is a magneto uh, magnet uh, magnet which is called magneto coil and it and it on the principle of uh, uh, change of flux, change, change of electrical flux, it produces the current, and that current is, is then supplied to the to the spark plug, and it produces the spark. And in compression ignition engines, we do not need any such system you, because you remember in, in compression ignition engine, uh, only air is compressed, and it is compressed so much that its temperature reaches to the self ignition temperature of the fuel, and then you supply the fuel, and the combustion starts. Engine can also be classified on the method of type of cooling. So engines can be air cooled or water cooled. So if you remember the bike engine, like I can show you again. So this is the bike engine. So in the, at the bike, this is the combustion chamber. So in uh, this is the combustion chamber, and we have the fins. So this is air cooled engine. Uh, and on the other hand, on in cars, we have a radiator which which cools down the water and then that cold water is supplied to the engine and it extracts heat from the engine and then it comes back comes back into the in the, into the radiator and it cools down so we use the water cooled engine uh, engines can also be classified on the basis of cylinder arrangement like we have the single cylinder inline or straight cylinders like we have one two three four cylinders and they are inline then we have V engine. This is the most commonly used engine. Like the, the cylinders and the, and the pistons are arranged in the shape of V. Then we have opposed cylinders. Like we have two cylinders opposite to each other. We have a W engine in which the cylinders and pistons are arranged in, in the shape of W, like this. And this is like the V shape. Uh, opposed pistons means like the piston will be up, the two pistons will be opposite to each other. And then we have a radial engine. Okay, so this is uh, at this point we have we are done with the with the classification of engines. Like this is a very simple topic. Like we discuss a different ways of classifying the engines. Like we can classify the engines on the basis of cycle type of uh, uh, cycle of operation, like auto auto cycle or diesel cycle on the basis of fuel, on the basis of cooling system, on the basis of ignition system, on the basis of cylinder arrangement. Now we come to the another uh, important topic of today's lecture that we will be discussing uh, basic components of internal combustion engines. So the first common part is the, the first main important part is the cylinder block. Cylinder block is the main supporting structures on which the other various components are mounted it contains the cylinders and normally made of cast iron or aluminium so i can show you the picture this is this this part is called uh, cylinder block so normally uh, this thing we will do in the practicals as well so like we will show you some uh, real engines and like if, let's suppose if i ask that uh, please show me where is the uh, cylinder block so you should always go in towards the center of the of the engine eh? because at the center of the engine you will you will find the uh, cylinder block because this is the main component of the engine which provides on which other various components are mounted and in the in the cylinder block you will find the, the cylinders then if it is air cooled you will find the fins outside the outside the cylinder block if it is air cooled and if it is water cooled you will find the water jacket so you can see the small holes uh, outside the cylinders in the body of cylinder block so these are the passages through which the uh, cold water passes and it, it extracts heat from the engine so this is the cylinder block and then the top part is called cylinder head this is the cylinder head uh, and cylinder head as the name suggests it will be mounted on the top of the cylinder block and you will always use a gasket between the cylinder head 
any cylinder block because this gasket will provide a, a, a sealed uh, a, a gas tight space they will it will avoid the leakage of the oil and and the and the and the exhaust gases so uh, you will always use a gasket between uh, cylinder head and the and the and the engine block and if i if i show you an engine a real engine and i ask please show me where is the uh, cylinder head then you will always go to the to the top of the engine so you should put your hand on the top of the engine like here there that it, this is the engine uh, cylinder head and the bottom part this part is called uh, crankcase uh, and crankcase also acts as a sump because here the oil because if the engine is not running then the due to the gravity oil all the oil will come here and and the oil will be stored here in this sump so this is called crankcase so cylinder block cylinder head crankcase so cylinder block will be in the middle it will be in the middle and it is the main component it is the main supporting structure for the other various components and then we have the cylinder head cylinder head will be at top of the engine and it contains the valves uh, springs and the camshaft all these things and the crankcase at the bottom crankcase will be at the bottom and it will it will act as a sump for for storing the oil and the and the crankshaft the rotating part the rotating shaft will also be found at the bottom of the engine so crankshaft will be found here and, and and again the gasket will be used between the between the cylinder block and the crankcase so and and then there will be different nuts and bolts will be used uh, to uh, to make the components uh, perfectly attached to each other so cylinder block cylinder heads crankcase this is done so again this is the cross section of the internal combustion engine so this part the, the, the middle part is the cylinder block the, the lower part is the crankcase and the top part is the this part is the cylinder head now the fourth basic component of internal combustion is the cylinder so cylinder uh, these are the circular cylinders in which the in which the piston moves uh, back and forth the piston do the piston does the uh, reciprocating motion so this component is called cylinder so like this engine has one two three four five six cylinders one two three four five six cylinders and the piston is moving up and down normally the surface of the of the cylinders are are made uh, very like uh, like polished hard surface so that the friction is reduced and the piston moves back and forth without any without with very less friction so these, these are the cylinders and the combustion chamber like there is no specific uh, combustion chamber but we at the top part of the the, the, the the top space of the of the cylinder is is the combustion chamber because uh, here the spark plug let's suppose in the case of uh, spark ignition engine here the air fuel mixture will come into the cylinder uh, into the cylinder and in the compression stroke air fuel mixture will be compressed and when the piston is at the top dead center the spark plug will give a spark and the combustion will start and the, and the and the combustion chamber will vary in the size like when it, when it is and the piston is at top dead center the combustion will be uh, will be like this uh, will be will have a minimum volume and when the piston is at uh, bottom dead center the combustion chamber will have a maximum volume so uh, i have i have uh, i have put like the a variety of uh, videos at the end of uh, third lecture it will show you all these parts all these all these parts in in a, in a real engine and and you will see the working of in an engine so if if somehow some concepts are not clear the videos will clear each and everything so if you have any question don't get confused uh, don't get puzzled all the all the questions will be answered when when i will show you a variety of videos at the end of uh, lecture number 3 of this of this week now we have the piston and the piston rings the cylindrical shaped mass that reciprocates back and forth in the and the cylinder this is the piston like this this is the piston and we have the connecting rod so the piston 
will moves back and forth in the in the cylinder so it fits perfectly into the cylinder providing a gas tight space with the help of piston rings normally there is a small clearance between piston and cylinder and this small clearance is covered with the help of uh, piston rings so there are two types of piston rings one are the compression rings and the other is the lubricating uh, ring so uh, with the help of lubrication uh, these rings provide a gas tight space and this is the first link in transmitting the pressure forces to the rotating crankshaft so when when the combustion is uh, started the exhaust gases are formed the exhaust gases will exert force the exhaust gases will exert force on this on this piston and and with the help of like the the force will be exerted here and then this force will be transmitted to the to the crankshaft and the crankshaft will rotate so you will see the slots here like these are the slots and in these slots uh, the rings will be will be inserted these rings piston rings and then we talk about the inlet and exhaust valve so it's these parts are very easy to understand uh, because valves are like uh, mushroom shape puppet types like you can see here like, like the, you can see here this is these are the inlet and exhaust valves they are mushroom shape puppet types so with the help of uh, with the help of inlet valve the air fuel mixture comes into the cylinder and through and with the help of exhaust valve the exhaust gases uh, go out of the of the out of the cylinder and the opening and closing of the exhaust and intake valve will be done with the help of a camshaft so i will show you later what is the camshaft so intake manifold the inlet valve this is the inlet and exhaust these are the inlet and exhaust valves but there is a passage or a piping system through which the air fuel mixture comes into the cylinder like you can see here this is a, like this is a piping system through which air fuel mixture comes into the cylinder so this is the inlet manifold and this is the inlet valve similarly this is the piping system through which the exhaust gases go out of the system this is the exhaust valve this is the exhaust valve and this is the exhaust manifold so the exhaust manifold is normally made of cast uh, cast iron or composite material while the intake manifold can be made of plastic because the intake manifold air fuel mixture is coming into the into the cylinder and it will have low temperature but the exhaust gases will have high high temperature that that is why the exhaust manifold cannot be made with the with the plastic now the other part is the spark plug as i have already told you that the spark plug is a device uh, which takes the high voltage current and then it produces a spark with the help of a with the help uh, with the help of a current and this spark uh, initiates the combustion in the cylinder so then we have the connecting rod it interconnects the piston and the crankshaft and it transmits the gas forces from the piston to the crankshaft so, so this is the shape of the piston a connecting rod connecting rod has one small end and one big end so this end is connected to the to the piston and this end is connected to the crankshaft like we use the gurdjian pin gurdjian pin to to join the small end the piston and we use the crank pin to join the big end to the crankshaft so you can hear see here uh, this is the piston and the piston is connected with the connecting rod to the crankshaft and you can also see this thing in the in the in this animation that this is the piston piston is connected to the to the uh, to the uh, piston is connected to the piston is connected to the uh, crankshaft with the help of a connecting rod okay now the other important basic component of an internal combustion is the camshaft so camshaft this is the camshaft and camshaft have like these lobes and these they have they are not circular they are elliptical in shape and like and and this elliptical shapes uh, uh opens and closes the valve so like when we have this you can see here when this the the highest point of the lobe 
come it pushes the uh, it pushes the valve downward and let's suppose it is the inlet air fuel uh, this is the inlet valve then when it is pushed downward it will be opened and the air fuel mixture will come into the into the engine like you can see here so this is the valve so when it is pushed when it is pushed downward it will go downward and this space will become open and the air fuel mixture will come into the cylinder similarly when it is pushed this valve will come downward because it is it is uh, connected to a spring so this thing will be will have a open space and the exhaust gases will go out of the engine so with the help of camshaft like camshaft has a has a has lobs so these lobs opens uh, open and close the inlet and exhaust valve and the camshaft is actually crankshaft is rotating the camshaft this is the crank crankshaft and you can see we have a timing belt so crankshaft is actually rotating the camshaft so you can also see here we have the uh, crankshaft and it is also it is it is actually rotating the camshaft and the inlet and exhaust valve are open and closed secondly it also controls the ignition system like when the air fuel mixture is sprayed and the and the combustion and the spark plug is the spark so this thing is also controlled by a camshaft the other basic component is the is the crankshaft so crankshaft is the is the is the heavy shaft to which like like here the this is the uh, big end like the piston connecting rod will be connected here uh, we have the connecting rod so here we have the piston this is the piston small end will be connected here this is the connecting rod and then and then the connecting rod is connected to the crankshaft now when the piston is pushed downward this crankshaft will be rotated and you can see there are many balancing loads so th th these loads are for the static and dynamic balancing so once the once the uh, crankshaft is pushed it will it will keep on rotating because of the inertia of the of these of these weights so uh, like for the first instant you have to put like you have to give the uh, push from the from the battery like the, the battery supplies the current to the to the engine and the engine will be when the engine is started and when the engine is started it will keep on running for the first for the first push you need the starting or ignition system and the crankshaft will always be found at the at the bottom of the of the engine like where the crankcase is there so this is this is the piston this is the connecting rod this is piston this is cr connecting rod and this is the crankshaft ch crankshaft so crankshaft will be found here okay now the other important part is the flywheel flywheel is attached at the at the crankshaft so the net torque imparted to the crankshaft during one complete cycle of operation of the engine fluctuates that is uh, because of the variation in the air fuel supply the torque will not be uniform when the torque is not uniform it may happen that the that the vehicle speeds varies it goes up and down up and down but you but you need the a uh, uniform speed or uniform torque at the at the crankshaft or the engine shaft so what you do you can do, you can install a, a, a high mass body like a high mass wheel at the crankshaft so what does it do it will it will it will uh, it will remove the fluctuation the slight fluctuation in the in the torque in the torque and it will provide a uniform torque at the crankshaft and the vehicle will run at a at a uniform speed at a uniform speed so when you attach this uh, heavy disc at the crankshaft when the crankshaft is rotated this fly, fly will keep, uh, will keep it uh, rotating with a uniform speed so this is the purpose of a of a flywheel okay so we are done with the basic components so students these uh, parts are very very important so when we will be doing the practicals the practicals viva we will show you different parts and then you have to tell the tell the names of each each part so like we can show you this part so you will you, you have to tell us that this is the camshaft these are the lobs these are the uh, inlet and exhaust valve we have the tappets we have the we have the rocker arm so 
this is the flywheel, this is the piston, this is the connecting rod, this is the crankshaft. So you have to tell each and every component of an engine. So I will, as I told you, I will show you different videos as well. So these, uh, uh, you will get familiar with the with the basic parts. Now let's now we will do uh, some nomenclature. We, let's we will discuss some uh, common terminologies which we will be using uh, most of the time in the internal combustion engines. Uh, there are two there are two terms like the TDC and BDC. TDC is the top top dead center. TDC is the top dead center. Like you can see here, you have a piston, you have a cylinder, and and, and this piston will go. This will go, this piston will go up and down, up and down, up and down. So the position of the piston when it, it it reaches to the maximum point here, so the piston will go the piston will go up, up, up. A time will come when this piston will stop, and then it, the piston will come down. So uh, there will be a minimum volume formed in the cylinder. This position is called top dead center. So at top dead center, the volume will be minimum in the cylinder. And then when the piston goes down, it will go down and it will come here, it will stop and then it will go up. So this is the called bottom dead center. And at bottom dead center, the volume will be volume will be maximum in the in the cylinder. So top dead center, uh, that is this is it will at, at top dead center this will be, we will have the clearance volume, and at the top and the bottom dead center we have the maximum volume in the in the cylinder. The stroke. The distance between TDC and BDC is called stroke and normally it is represented by l and it is and and it is uh, it is mentioned in the unit of millimeter the, the diameter of the piston is called bore it is represented by small d and it is it's also mentioned in in millimeter so the piston area is re represented by a and centimeter square cc so let's suppose uh, we can assume the piston as a cylinder so what is the area of the cylinder? The area of the cylinder is pi r square. Pi r square or pi by 4. Pi by 4 d square. Inlet and exhaust wall we have already learned uh, through, the inlet, through the inlet wall the air fuel mixture comes into the into the cylinder and through the exhaust wall air fuel, uh, exhaust gases will go out of the cylinder. Clearance volume it is represented by Vc and its unit is centimeter cube or cc. The minimum volume formed in the cylinder when the piston is at TDC is called the clearance volume. Displacement or swept volume it is represented by Vs. Its unit is centimeter cube or cc. The volume displaced by the piston as it moves between TDC and BDC is called the displacement volume. So when the piston, so when the piston goes from BDC to TDC so the, and the exhaust valve is open so the volume will be displaced all the volume present here it will go out so the exhaust is let's suppose the exhaust gases are present in the in the cylinder these exhaust gases will be displaced when the piston goes from BDC to TDC and the exhaust gases will go out similarly if the piston is going from TDC to BDC and the inlet valve is open then the air fuel mixture will come into the cylinder again the volume will be displaced so if we want to know the uh, volume so the unit will be area into length because this thing will be uh, like a volume cylinder shape cylindrical shape so the volume of so the formula for the volume of cylinder is area into length area we can calculate with the help of pi by 4 d square into l so cubic capacity or engine capacity like you, this is a very common term like those who are familiar with bikes and in, in cars like 660 uh, cc engine, 1000 cc engine, 1300 cc engine, 850 cc engine. So this is the uh, engine capacity. So what is the, how, how do you calculate the engine capacity or cubic capacity? So you need to multiply the swept volume of a cylinder, multiply with the number of cylinders. Let's suppose if you have, have four cylinders, four cylinders. So you need to multiply the, uh, the swept volume of one cylinder with, into with the help of with, to the multiply with the four. So thousand thousand cc uh, means let's suppose it has four cylinders. So it means it's 
the volume of one cylinder will be 250 cc so 250 into 4 will be 1000 cc engine compression ratio is the it's the ratio between maximum volume and the minimum volume maximum volume is at uh, vdc vbdc divided by minimum volume minimum volume is formed at tdc so total volume can be written as vc plus vs that is the clearance volume plus sweat volume you can see this figure clearance volume so this volume will be clearance volume and this volume will be swept volume and if we add them together we will get the total volume so vc plus vs divided by vc and if we break the lcm this will become 1 plus vs upon vc this is the formula for the compression ratio so clearance volume is shown here this is the clearance volume that is volume at T V C or V C clearance volume and this is the swept volume and if we add them together it will become the V P D C this is the total volume and total volume is equal to V S plus V C so these things are also shown here this is the clearance volume TDC piston piston rings bottom dead center connecting rod crankshaft piston is at uh, piston at top dead center and then we have the piston at bottom dead center and let's suppose this compression ratio is 6 this is the bore so this is a very simple figure uh, on the basis of stroke to bore ratio so if d is less than l that is the stroke is less than sorry the bore bore is less than bore is less than stroke so like we have something like uh, something like this so as you can see here this is the bore D and bore is less than less than stroke so this is the under square engine and when we have the square engine in, in square engine we have we have bore is equal to stroke we have a square engine and then when D is greater than L it will be a over square engine an over square engine can operate at higher speeds because of larger bore at and shorter stroke. The stroke will be the so over square engine will be look like so will something something like this. D and as you can see that D is greater than L. So the stroke is 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 shorter. So because of that the over square engine can run at higher speeds okay so with this i end uh, lecture number one so we have discussed uh, quite a lot of theory so i recommend you to go through all these points and and these points are uh, uh, not not very difficult uh, if you are getting confused and if you are getting puzzled and do not get panic uh, because at the end of uh, video lecture number three I will be showing you uh, different videos of the of the engine models and the and the real engines then everything everything will be cleared so please mark my words everything will be cleared different parts the dif uh, working of different engines or spark ignition engine compression ignition engine uh, they will all be explained when you will have like the uh, pictorial view the pictorial uh, way of explanation you will have the videos you will have the pictures you will have the moving parts you will have the real engine parts so uh, they will be explained with the help of uh, with the help of interactive video section so everything will be cleared so i hope today i, I end uh, today's lecture so uh, i say allah and see you next time allah